Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets and the markets closely associated. And without any hesitation, let's jump into a brief weekly recap. Last week when we recorded, gold was 2,455, coming off of that all-time high. Big Friday down day. We rallied back up a little bit, but we're recording at 2,400 down just over 2%. Silver last week was 3021. It's also down, but 4% at $29. And platinum back a week ago was 996. It's down 4% at 958. And palladium uh, actually hanging in there, only down 1% uh, from 957 to 949. But that's not where the volatility stops. What else do we have going on, guys, market volatility-wise? You've got the NASDAQ down, the Dow, the transports, S&P. It's just red tape. All U.S. Across. dollar. Dollar is down, yeah. Miles Optimism Index, <laughs> way down. <laughs> I am the eternal positive soul. That's just, I can't help it. All down means is future up. That's all that means, right? Well, with know. the equities, Rob, I mean, how far are we going to go down there? That's so hard to tell because there's so much cash sitting on the sidelines, just waiting for buying opportunities. But, you know, NASDAQ's down 722 points as we talk. The S&P, it's down 128 points, down two and a third percent. The Dow and the transports, the Dow's down over 500, transports down over 240. I don't know if we're setting up for a tough week next week. That would be my guess. And I do think it's going to drag gold down with it. Miles, what are you thinking? Yeah, certainly starting with the equities, just because it is some pretty big days down, but you're still talking about the Dow over 41,000. I mean, we're, we're talking about a pretty significant move up in the Dow. It was below 40. Yeah, it's yeah. a 39,850 right now. Yeah, it is. But it also started in October last year right. at 32. Yeah. yeah. So 32 to 41 and a decline to 39,8. 39.7. Yeah, I'm not too concerned yet. Get me a Dow average at 36.8, and I'll start going, okay, are we seeing some rollover action here? Okay. Yeah. If anything, I think the Dow was just so overbought that it was about stinking time. So completely agree with you. You could kind of argue the same with gold too. Gold had a pretty strong, just on a shorter scale, Mm -hmm. uh, but we had a pretty strong move up. Now, it wasn't from October. Uh, gold from October might be a little bit of a different conversation because that's a solid 37, 38% move bottom to top. But just looking here since July, a real nice kind of puncture above the highs, which we talked about here over the last week or two. Gold pushing up from around 2300 to 24 almost 2490 2485 87 something like that so a little bit of a comeback here i put some fib levels on the chart last week we blew right through that 2410 that's your 382 fib came back and kind of flirted with it a little bit over the last couple days but ultimately we sort of bottomed out at the 50 percent line around 2390 you know nice little bounce back up but man it's really coming down today nice little decline in the price of gold from about 24 and a quarter down i think we're back under 2400 now as we're recording so i'm i'm looking at that 618 fib short term maybe 2365 somewhere in the 2360 to 2370 range i think that'd be a pretty good little bounce there for gold but we got to get below the low from a few days ago from monday 2380 and it's funny, in the good old days, I'd say, oh, we bounced 2380, we're on our way below it. But the way gold's been acting, we're getting some double bottoms here. Like mm -hmm. just because we touch a number doesn't mean we're going to blow through it next time. And that's kind of my concern for gold. We're running out of time here. I listened to a great records interview this week, and he brought up an interesting point. And he goes, we're coming up on the September Fed meeting sooner than later, and mm -hmm. they keep threatening interest rate drops. They ain't going to lower interest rates in September before the election. They're not doing it, at least according to records. So if it doesn't happen now, it isn't happening this year. And I think a lot of people were banking on one, two, three interest rate declines. We don't have until December to get rate drops in. He's arguing we just have till September 
to get those rate drops in. And you can't really do one then because of the election so close, it would look too political. So if we start seeing market decreases, significant market decreases, and we run out of runway where you can place an interest rate decline to kind of boost that back up, we could see some bumps and bruises going into fourth quarter this year. Yeah, I think that's a great point. The politicalization of the Fed is a risky venture. And I know that there will be pressure on the Fed from the current administration to do exactly that. But it would give the appearance of election interference and manipulation. Yeah, because Wall Street is getting behind Kamala and the tech giants on the West Coast are getting behind Trump. So I think the lines are being drawn. Well, the politics are part of the reason that we're seeing so much volatility in the metals. Obviously, you have President Biden withdrawing from the campaign. And so you just mentioned now nominee apparent uh, with Vice President Harris. But, you know, this is coming off of an active and motivated RNC convention Mm -hmm. last week that had everyone kind of expecting a change already. Now we know there's going to be a change Mm -hmm. in the presidency. There's no way around that. But you've got to remember that these two approaches are completely different economically, from a regulatory standpoint, from a tax standpoint, from a spending standpoint. So it's really hard to tell what the end of the year shapes up like with the precious metals because we don't know politically how the end of the year shapes up yet. Well, and let me throw out another question. I know you did a little work because people are thinking, okay, if Trump does get elected, the price of gold could go down. What was it like during his first term? Well, therein lies the issue, right? If you maintain aggressive spending, you can drive the economy and drive the metals prices higher. In fact, silver actually does better. So do platinum and palladium in a hot economy rather than the stagflation that we've been kind of limping through. But in Trump's four years as president, Rob, to that question, first year, gold up 8.5%. Second year, gold up 13.4%. In the third year, it was down, but only 2.1%. And then it was up 19.3% in his fourth year. So all said and done, gold ended up 39% in the positive during his four years of presidency. Because again, there was still aggressive spending. Right. There's increased debt. There's increased spending. Yes, there's a hot economy, but that doesn't make the dollar stronger. And so a weaker dollar obviously will drive a lot of that. So I'm not convinced that it matters. In fact, interestingly enough, the World Gold Council said in a polarized world, gold will be well supported no matter who wins the U.S. presidency. And that's where the geopolitical tensions come in. And and again, we don't even know how the year ends in terms of the geopolitical scene, but it's going to be fascinating from now. And we knew this at the start of this year. We did. That this was going to be a year to remember. Yeah. And man, it hasn't disappointed you. I was just going to say, (laughs) no, has not disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, Miles, what else you have there, Chart Monkey? Well, let's take a look and see if we have some similarity between gold and silver this week. Silver also down a little bit. So silver taking a dive here since last Wednesday, kind of coming down from around 31 and a half. We're down below 30, in fact, below 29 as we're recording now, 28.88. So coming off the highs from the end of May at 32.50. Realistically, we're still above the lows in this kind of trading range we've had now going back to May when we sort of broke above 28. We've been trading, you know, between really 29 and 32 for the last six, eight weeks. So silver is arguably at the bottom of its trading range, although I don't know if I want to call this a trading range. I'm not entirely sure it's going to hold. So in case it doesn't, what are some of the things we could be looking at here for silver? So this 28 and a half number, that is your 382 fib. If you look back to the start of the silver run up at 2250, going back to the end of February, all the way up to 3250. So a $10 run there between February and May, not too shabby on an almost 50% move in a couple months. Not surprised to see at least a 382 fib retracement. I like the 618 here as well. That's 26 and three quarters. That keeps us above the previous trading range going all the way back to highs in like May and April of last year. So the 618 keeps us above those highs. That gives us a nice two steps forward, one step back. 
And if I'm putting on my Jim Cramer roll the dice gambling hat, that's where I'm rolling the dice for silver is about 26 and a quarter. I'm probably going to buy a couple times on the way down. That's what vaulted is for. It allows me to make those little incremental silver purchases every couple of weeks like I've been doing for the last few years. But if I see anything sub 26 and a half, I'm getting real excited about silver. Big time. And if you look at silver at 26 and a half, maybe putting gold at what, 2300? That's bringing your gold silver ratio up back between like 86 to 90. And now things start getting really interesting again for the gold silver ratio. So we could get some movement. Well, we're not far from there now. We're at 82 and a half right now. Yeah. And climbing. And climbing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just the volatility of silver, right? Whatever gold does, silver does better. If gold goes up, (laughs) silver goes up more. If gold goes down, silver goes goes down down more. more. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You know, and the charts are so helpful in terms of the short term cycles. And sometimes we'll dip into the intermediate term and the long term. The long term is still, we're in very bullish markets here with the physical metals, not just technically, fundamentally, right? The underlying fundamentals have us unfortunately encouraged on the gold price, especially over the next couple of years. And part of that, one of the big fundamentals is just our debt. And Elon Musk came out and said, America is going bankrupt as 76% of June tax receipts went to interest on our debt. So think about that. As these economic numbers roll in, and we just had the June numbers, 76% of our tax receipts went to the interest on our debt. That is unsustainable, and technically that is a bankruptcy. So I can see why Elon Musk would be saying exactly that. Well, on that negative news. Yeah, Yeah, on that super optimistic news. Well, on that, I hear about 76% of our listeners are not subscribed. So how about you head on down and hit the subscribe button, ring the bell while you're at it, get notifications here on the YouTube. I mean, YouTube's been around a long time. We all know how the process works. So appreciate you stopping by as always. Thank you for joining us each week here on Golden Rule Radio. If you liked what you heard, you can find more info on our website at McIlvaney.com. We're also on Twitter with Elon Musk over at X at ICA Gold and Facebook at McIlvaney Financial. Better yet, if you'd like to discuss your personal precious metals portfolio with one of the advisors here at McIlvaney Precious Metals, we can be reached at 1-800-525-9556. Thanks as always for listening and hope you have a great week.